wackos firearms, they'll be out there pumping bullets into innocent civilians. I won't give them any weapons, Roger. Besides, these boys don't need weapons. They're impervious to pain. This thinks something awful, Chief. God be with you on this one. Roger, that was God. Now, Dick. Yes? Wait a minute, which one of you is Dick? We're both Dicks, Doctor. You see, well, did it ever occur to you that perhaps you have too much free time on your hands? That is why you sit about dwelling on issues that don't concern you directly. Oh, but it does concern us, Doctor. Within the slaughterhouse of criminal prevention, we must all wield the sharpened axe and hack and chop at the necks of the proverbial criminal cows. And with these sides of beef, I empathize with your anguish, my dear chum, but true criminal prevention comes not from the sharpened axe, my friend, but from the sharpened mind. You must excuse Dick, Dr. Salvo. I think what Dick and I are trying to express here this afternoon is that we feel we're being driven do something, something of mammoth proportions. Well, good. Good. I think you two need to get out of the house much more often. They're offering a new pottery course down at the university. Why don't you check that out? <laughs> pottery man? We think not. We have neither the time nor the patience to sit in a classroom and molest and finger clay clumps. Well, innocent citizens are being raped and slaughtered for sport. Young Dick and I have been ignoring the moanings and the wailings of the tortured citizens for much, much too long. He and I must act. He and I together now, before it is too late, before we are all sucked up and consumed by this tidal wave of pain and blood. <laughs> and his band of merry murderers broke into the state observatory today. They tied up one of the professors and gods. They also took off with three million dollars worth of scientific equipment. The only thing they left us was this note. That perverse little riddles, the only clue we have. Hmm. What half several dozen heads Dozens and dozens of necks, yet no discernible human organs. Let's see. Many, many heads. Dozens and dozens of necks. Okay, now, what does that look like? Holy gang sex! An orgy mock man? Yes, it could be, young chum, but orgy-goers do possess human organs. No, it must be something more abstract. What if I were to draw two planes through this grouping of heads and necks? Like thus. Now what does that look like? Senseless scribble! Wrong, Roger. It is common knowledge that two parallel planes will intersect at the point of infinity. A and what the hell does that have to do with anything? Well, if memory serves me, this montage of heads and necks resembles some form of topographical or astrological physical map. Now, adding up the various variables. The rational numerals and their negative coefficients. We get 342 degrees and 172 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, these are map coordinates. Holy billiard balls! That's the direct coordinates to Jimmy's pool hall over on South Washington Street! God bless you all. That show should have been a series. But it wasn't. Was That's what tonight is all about. We have one man here who has successfully crossed over, and he has six nominations in various categories. Mr. Lenny Oiliano, Mr. Traffic Safety. Oh! families like yours, considerate people who care about safety, yes. people who pull over to let an ambulance pass because 
They know that a few precious moments can make the difference between life and death. Now go play at traffic, you loser. Jesus. Yeah! That the nominee for best traffic oriented TV variety talk show is Lenny Iorios, Mr. Traffic Regulation. <laughs> Do you do when the light turns yellow? Do you take that as a challenge to race through the intersection? I hope not. Because when the light turns yellow, that means it's time to put on the brakes, unless you are already crossing. I mention this because as I speak, there is a boy in the hospital. He decided to take the challenge. Yes, yes. When the light turned yellow, he tried to race right and through. Well, as a result, his whole future is going to be a much greater challenge than it ever should have been. So when you see the light turn yellow, that means you put on the brakes. You got me. patients has declined drastically because more oh. people are conscious, conscious of traffic safe book hotel. Oh. Oh. Jesus, what a psycho! <laughs> That's quite enough, Mr. Traffic Regulation. just love it when I come out back and talk about my hybrid dry flowers. Here they are here, provided to me by the Lesbian Coalition of Flower Growers of America, that fabulous company somewhere located north in New Jersey. After we look at these, we're going to tip on over to my other garden, where we're going to see big, hybrid, oversized cucumbers and some humongous cantaloupes, which have been growing for the entire summer. What do you say? Homosexual clown, John. Jesus. Humpy McFarlane, Janice Klein, and Mike Dovdanovich producers. <laughs> Hello, boys and boys, and welcome to the Humpy the Clown Show. Tonight's big adventure is going to be shh, don't tell your parents, <laughs> and also doggy tricks. I love male doggies. And also, we're going to have special birthdays. Hello to Brad, and Bobby, and Jim, and Ed, and John, and Jack. And after those words from our sponsors, we'll be right back. <laughs> I don't know, Pink. The anticipation just killing me. Uh, I'll be the homosexual. <laughs> my gay boys and little likelings. It's great to be here. Humpy the Clown, for all your years of tasteful gay comedy, we present you with this meager token of our appreciation. Oh, boy! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. But there's a sad clown in jail. John Wayne Gacy. Oh, Christ. And everybody makes mistakes. And I think he's paid for those. This guy's an idiot. Sight, he's a good clown. <laughs> good clown? He killed like 80 people. John, I hate to say it, but I agree with you. Uh, and I'm a homophobe. <laughs> oh, our show is about girls and boys on the fence of their sexuality. And we just give them options and facts in a circus, funhouse-type atmosphere. 